Well, Compass, as mentioned, we started Compass in, in 96, and that was really in Canada. Um, we're quantum drilling systems up there. We couldn't get the, we couldn't get the quantum name in the, in the United States, so we went with Compass and tried to go back to Canada and get Compass, and we couldn't get <coughs> Compass up there either. So we ended up with the two different entities, one in Canada and one here. And I ended up really coming down to the States when a fellow that I'd worked with at Eastman Christensen called me and said he had a project with uh, he had a project with Texaco to do all their I think it was a one year contract to do all their work in West Texas. So I came down and at the time I didn't even have have the first MWD or I did have the first MWD and it was staying busy in actually in Canada. So I ended up buying another small company and picking up another three or four MWD systems. Came back down and then we spent at least one or two years doing nothing but Texaco in West Texas. We ended up buying a race car trailer um, set up with a living quarters in the front and a shop in the back where they used to have the race car. At the time I had um, Brad, one of my sons, was my technicians. So he'd go to town in the morning, pick up movies for the afternoon, work in the mornings. I was doing the directional drilling plus the uh, MWD, and then he was my technician. So it was interesting years. Really, after that Texaco project ended, we, we got more into the leasing business. Um, we didn't really run any jobs for oh, probably 10 years. We didn't run any jobs. As Compass, we were, all we were doing is a sales and leasing company. We maintained all the China sales, expanded that when Kels got involved. But really, we made our money by enabling the directional drilling companies to be full service and compete against the majors. That was the sort of the basis of setting up Compass and what they contributed to the industry. Got to the point where we are today with the independent directional drilling companies control 70% of the market, probably. You know, the balance of the market, 20, 30% is controlled by the majors domestically. But like I say, I think that was a big part of our contribution is we did enable the independent directional drilling company to compete. What happened is we got so many companies involved in it and you can spend two or three years on a company getting them set up, supplying them tools, um, training them, doing their maintenance, all this sort of thing for a while. At some point, they go off on their own. And sort of when that, when that happened, then we became more and more focused on the international market to carry on that same business model.